That's Jesus. Hello, hello, hello. It's Attorney Mike Gravelin, coming to you from Chicago as usual. We're waiting for our woman in common law who was held in All contempt. Right. Uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> we are in the 53rd Circuit Court for the County of Sheboygan. I'm sorry. We are actually in the 89th District Court. That's this case is an 89th District Court case. Uh, we're conducting a hearing in the circuit courtroom. <clears throat> it's being uh, clerked from the 89th District Courtroom that has participated by video conference technology into the hearing. And uh, I am providing public access both in the courtroom and also <clears throat> online. Uh, so for that reason, uh, we request that nobody would try to uh, record or photograph anything during the hearing as that can be disruptive to the proceedings. So we'll call the matter in the matter of contempt of Beth Michelle Bridgman filed. It's filed under the case of People State of Michigan uh, versus Flores filed 23 8 six eight sd so miss bridgman if you want to come forward to the table i'm unable to do that <clears throat> i don't have a license to practice law in the bar arena and in the water i am a woman on the land under the law of the land and under the one true god i'm a living soul and okay i mean you're offered a contract with beth michelle bridgman in all caps that's i'm not that person anybody else in this room that person Hey, 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 hang on. Okay. So, Miss Miss Bridgman, um, you're correct that the bar in the courtroom, uh, people have to be licensed attorneys to cross the bar to represent other people. Uh, of course, people can and do, as you have, represented yourself on this side of the bar. <clears throat> so, you're welcome to sit at the table there, which would perhaps be more comfortable for you, if you would prefer to proceed from where you're standing or sitting that's fine with me as well do you have a preference then uh, i'd like to stay right here okay uh, that's my honor good. um i think the first matter i need to address is that um i have a copy of your sworn oath here and if that's not relevant for today so miss bridge when you filed a motion for me to recuse myself i'm going to deny that motion it didn't present any basis for recusal so that motion is denied, and we're here for a contempt hearing, uh, you, which you've been arraigned on for your contempt for interfering with court process and the unauthorized practice of law, and then failing to attend. This is true. Uh, so, Ms. Miller, any opening statements? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I will share with you the evidence that uh, Ms. Bridgman engaged in the unauthorized practice of law. Um, that is contrary to MCL 600.916. Um, she further prevented uh, the defendant in the underlying case from meeting with his um, MDR, MIDC attorney prior to his arraignment on November 30th, 2023. And she also failed to appear for her show cause on uh, December 20th, 2023. Are you, do you wish any witnesses to custody? Um, I don't believe so. Okay, Ms. Bridgman, uh, now's the time you can make your opening statement to me, but first, um, do you wish to have any witnesses that will be presented sequestered, meaning that they have to leave the courtroom and be instructed to not, not watch the I'm contracted feed? with this, this uh, hearing, this administrative hearing cannot be, I cannot be adulterous to my own oath of office. I'm going to assume that you're rejecting my under request an authority. for sequestration orders and no sequestration orders enter. So go ahead with your opening statement. Law is um, must be a contract. In the absence of a, in a valid contract, there is no law. Period, which might be part of the problem that we have here. Now, I, I I don't mean to interrupt you, and I'm and I'm not going to interrupt you often during your opening statement. I do want you to know that because of the way the video feed works, um, from where you're standing, uh, it's not picking you up. And uh, I assume that the audio is going to work through for the for the district courtroom that's clipping it. Um, but it's I'm content with all the state, the people okay. that are here that right, reside gonna... on the land that most of us call Michigan. If that's who is bringing charges against me and there is no person injured, and there's no property damage, there should be no case. So my statement 
is that how can I put myself in your jurisdiction, except that you could do it by force and arrest me with four deputies with no due process and violate my unalienable rights to try to force me into your jurisdiction because your oath of office is a violation of section five, United States code 3001. You do not have an oath giver. You have yourself that signed it and you have a notary. I just um, did an oath with the people here today and they signed it, I signed it and we got a couple of them notarized. That's how it should be. This is not a valid oath. I cannot stand in this court and be brought up because in fact, you are operating or masquerading as a lawful court, but you're in fraud of the very oath that would give your court legitimacy. I have a remedy, your honor. I have an oath here. And if you would like to take it in the presence of the people, and sign and notarized, we can move forward. Otherwise, I would be violating my very own oath of office and an oath I just took downstairs as well um, to the United States of America's Constitution. All right, does that conclude your opening remarks? Well, it concludes the fact that I see that you're not interested or care what the people and the truth of the lawful process of the people. I don't know if anybody else cares to say that. I, there is no energy and there is no property damage. I do believe I withheld Mr. Gilbert from some money he was probably banking on that day. And I believe the court operates in commerce and is here to make a profit on all of their activities. So that is my violation. The state of Michigan would love, hated that I blocked an attorney before Seth was arraigned. You cannot be bringing me in, in, the, in the hallway downstairs and charging me and then tell me that you're the true judge of the 53rd Circuit Court when your oath is not properly even administered. I happen to know, I believe, did you take a Bar Association oath? I'm not answering questions. Are you done with your opening statement? I guess I don't really need to be here because this is not a legitimate court that I should be standing in. And I will not violate my own oath by submitting myself to an authority that has not done the proper oath himself. All right, Ms. Tate, Ms. Miller, your uh, first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Richmond, you may not leave the courtroom. I know you have people that need to know that they are violating people's unalienable rights by picking them up off the street without a single piece of paperwork. Okay, Ms. Miller, who's your first witness? Does anybody else have a problem with this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, hang on. There's going to be no outbursts in the courtroom or you'll have to be removed. All right, Mr. Bird, please raise your right hand. You may not leave the courtroom. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, like that? Yes. Okay. I'd be happy to administer a legitimate Richmond, hang on. So the court process works. I gave you both a chance for your opening statements. This hold is on. not a hold court on, I on. can submit to. Hold on. The process is going to be. I know you like to look to. really regal up there and you know, maintain a degree of authority. Ms. And you Richmond, have guys carrying guns. Ms. Richmond. I'm fully aware of that. Ms. Where Richmond, are their I body can, cams and their vehicle cams? I can put you in a jail cell. You can watch it from there. I know that's what you're hoping to do. So Ms. Miller is going to be given an opportunity to question the witness, and then you'll be given an opportunity to question the witnesses. That's how court procedure operates. If you interfere with that procedure, you're going to be in direct contempt of court. Ms. Miller, proceed with your question. I would have to be. Can you state your name for the record? I'm David Berg. And can you spell your last name? B-E-R-G. And how are you employed? I'm the IT director for Sporting County. And in that capacity, um, are you able to see and access the surveillance footage in the building? Yes, I am. And are you able to um, pull portions of that video off the server? I am. And um, were you working that capacity on uh, November 30th, 2023? Yes. And are you um, aware of uh, security footage that was pulled from the system for that date? Yes, I am. 
Do you know what um, the time frame of that security alert that was pulled was? Uh, eight to ten. Eight to ten. And do you know what part of the building was um, pulled from the system for that time frame? I believe there were about five camera views, um, mainly downstairs in front of district court in the, in the uh, entryway. Okay. And did you review this um, thumb drive prior to sitting here to testify today? Yes, I did. And does everything on this thumb drive, was that pulled from the system from November 30th? May? Objection. This is all hearsay. Anything that is on that video is all hearsay. Uh, it hasn't been offered into evidence yet, so hold on a second. So you were able to view everything on the thumb drive? Yes. And um, was that all footage from those cameras from November 30th? Yes. Yes. It hasn't been offered into evidence yet. Hold on a and <clears throat> no, I know your presumptions are that if it's set in court and it's not objected, it becomes presumptive evidence. All he said is that he reviewed it. Continue. And did it appear to be um, she is leading edited in any way? I'm sorry, what's that? Did it appear to be edited in any way? No, it's software that we have to not allow us to edit. So it's the full um, capture of that yes. time frame? Yes. Okay, I'd move to admit People's Exhibit 1. Okay, Exhibit 1 has been offered for admission. Ms. Bertrand, do you have an objection? I have an objection that anything in the hallway is going to be considered contempt of court. Okay, it is. Uh, I'm going to presume that that's an objection as to relevance. It is relevant. Uh, objection over to the one submitted. Thank you. So, sure. my honor, can we move to settle this? Because I know your main objective is to get me into jail unconstitutionally again. Mr. Richmond, I assure you that is not my objective today. If it is your objective, there's easy ways that you can make that happen by continuing to behave the way that you are. But I assure you that is not my intention today. All right, so one's in there. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the time frame on the video is two hours. Um, I don't think the court wants to, I don't want to show the full two hour video um, if I would be allowed to present um, various snippets of relevant time from the video. Okay, go ahead. All right, so Ms. Bridgman, Ms. Miller's going to play portions of the security footage for the court. I'm not sure if you're able to see it from where you are standing. Again, I invite you, you're welcome to sit at the table where you can see the footage. And I was the there, Your Honor, and before the living God, I know what's on that video, and I have not violated or broken any laws. I have stood in the way of your commerce court, so I understand that that's a contempt of court charge because you're a for-profit for court. Okay. And for the record, my office did contact Ms. Birchman to offer to give her a copy of the flash, flash drive or have put on a flash drive for her, and she indicated that she did not want a copy. Okay, go ahead and go. And about how long is this footage? Um, the various clips that I show will be approximately five minutes. Okay. I'm here. I'm just standing out of the way. Because it's so juicy, I don't want to step on any of it. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, the focus is right here. I can't see anything. Okay, well, I can move the TV closer to the bench. Well, I don't know if that'll help you. That's way off in the corner. I can move to the next clip and see if the court can see on that. But... I mean, I see there's people down in the hall. I don't see how it would help me render a decision. Well, then I, I can just reserve to show the clips in okay. case we need to later on. <laughs> then I have no further questions for um, Mr. Burke. All right, Ms. Bridgman, do you have any questions for uh, the witness, Steve Burke? When's the last time you were at Salvation Army with your daughter? <laughs> A couple weeks, probably. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I missed it. 
That's all I got. Okay, thank you. Uh, your next witness. Thank you, Honor. People would call um, Seth Morris. Now, Your Honor, before you call the next witness, I would love to be in honor in your courtroom. And I would ask that we would settle to say this young man. We're in the middle of it here. Mr. Forrest, would you please raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I got it. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you state your name for the record? Uh, Seth Flores. And can you spell your last name? F L O R E S. Okay, thank you. And were you uh, present in this building on November 30th, 2023? Yes, I believe so. Why did you come to the building on that day? Uh, I had a court date for an arraignment. Okay, do you remember what time you showed up at the court? I think around 10, maybe. And when you um, came into the building, what happened? Um, walked in, that approached me. Um, seemed like she, she wanted to help me. Uh, um, she told me I didn't need a lawyer. And uh, the judge suggested that I should talk to one. Okay, well, can I stop you for a minute? Um, you said Beth approached you. Do you see Beth in the courtroom today? Um, what's she wearing? Jacket. I asked the court to, uh, for the record, to reflect that uh, Mr. Flores said I'm fighting for him. And the uh, the district court is clerking it. They're telling me they're having a hard time hearing the witness, Mr. Flores. Can you speak up? But you have to use your outside voice. <clears throat> yeah. Should I repeat the question? No, no. Go ahead. Okay. And. So before you walked into the building on the 30th, did you know um, Beth? No. You just yeah. met her on that day? Yeah. And um, when you went into the courtroom, did anyone go with you? No. You don't remember anyone being in the courtroom with you? Uh, they didn't walk in with me or... I guess I can clarify. Once you were in the building, and then you went into the room where the judge is. Okay, okay, leading the witness. Know. Come on. But that, that's just laying over oh, rules. Go ahead. Yes, I walked in the courtroom. I thought you would have prepped them better than this page. Ms. And Bridgman, that is not a proper objection. That's an that's an interjection that's disorderly. Don't do that. I, I know you're 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 an adult human being, so you're capable of controlling yourself. So please do so. This is a, a format that has to be dignified and follow proper procedures and be ordered. Okay, you just be you ordered. just made my case, Judge, because your oath is not properly in order. Mr. Flores, when you so just to repeat, when you went into the room with the judge, I didn't go with you. Uh, just Beth. Okay. And um, at some point when you were in the room, do you remember if Beth said anything to the judge? Uh, that I didn't need a lawyer. I didn't say that in the court. Hang on. You can't hear the witness. Miss, You're Ms. putting Ms. words in his mouth. You'll have an opportunity to ask questions, but you can't interject during Well, questions. I have to object. Okay. And then um, at some point, did the judge tell you to do anything? Uh, speak to a lawyer. Okay. Did yeah. you ever speak That's to a lawyer action. on that day? What's your objection? She's just leading. She's taking them through every step, which I can review. And um, she's telling them, you should have done this prior, Paige. You should have had them in here earlier and prepped them. She asked him a question, did this happen? And he said, yes, that's perfect. That's proper. leading. That no, she leading. should ask that's him what leading. happened. Do you recall what happened when you tried to, uh, or when an attorney approached you in the hallway? Um, Beth tried speaking to him and went live and speak to him. Do you remember who that lawyer was? Uh, Gilbert. And were you ever able to talk to Gilbert about your arraignment? Only after. After me, by only after. Like, uh, I don't think I did. Maybe like a couple of days or a week after. Okay, but not on the 30th. Did you not ever talk to Mr. Gilbert? Not on that day, no. And did um, you ever give any paperwork back to the court that morning? 
Yes, I did. Did you write anything on that paper? Can we ask him what he did? Objection? She, she is overruled. No, she's not. Um, mm -hmm. Not really sure what I wrote on the ticket. Um, something about it's my personal vehicle, or it wasn't my personal vehicle, and I wasn't driving. Why did you write that on your ticket? Um, that's a guess of detail. And does that mean anything to you what you wrote on the paper? Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> so you said that Beth suggested that you write that on your ticket? Yes. And um, what did you do with the ticket after you wrote on it? Uh, I think I turned it into the civil court desk. But you don't have it uh, as a transcriber. You have to keep all the notes yourself. Or is that so, Ash Richard, that's not a proper objection. Stop misbehaving. You know how to behave. Behave. I'm not sure. I'm the only one in bad behavior, Your Honor. According to Article Two or Article Three, Section Two, Court. Go ahead, Mister. You might be in bad behavior. Your Honor, may I approach your witness? Uh, why don't you hand it to the bailiff? We'll have to do that. Is that a copy of your ticket? And is that your handwriting on it? Yes. That, is that what you turned into the court? I believe so. Your Honor, I, I guess I would ask the court to take judicial notice of the ticket. I believe it's in the court's file already on what Mr. Flores turned into the district window on November 30th. It is or not, but uh, I'll, I'll still take judicial notice of the court's own records. Do you have it marked as an exhibit? I do. What number, what number is it? It's exhibit two. Two will be admitted. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then after you gave your ticket to the window, what did you do next? Um, I was advised to leave. Who advised you to leave? Uh, so um, at that point, did you leave? Yeah. At any point in that morning, did you um, address the court on your ticket? No, I did not. And after you initially were told to meet with, with an attorney, did you ever go back into the courtroom? Uh, I think about a week later. Okay, but that day, did you ever go back? No. And following um, your, following living in the courtroom, what did you do after that? Um, just went out and got some, some lunch. Okay, who did you do that with? Uh, You remember where that was? I'm um, not really sure. Let me see. Okay. And then, um, did, did. Sorry, Mr. Flores, you're really going to have to use your outside voice. That's good. <laughs> and while you were at lunch, did uh, Ms. Bridgman ever give you any money? No. Oh, for uh, my phone, yes. So did she give you any money? Yeah. How much money did she give you? Sixty dollars. And what was that? Sixty dollars in cash. Yes. And that occurred after the same day as the court uh, arraignment in the morning. I believe so. Is there any more questions for this witness? All right, Ms. Richmond, do you have any questions for Mr. Flores? Sure. Okay, go ahead. Good to see you, sir. I'm sorry it's under these circumstances. Um, the way I recall it, uh, you were talking to some of my friends before we talked. 
while we were talking and then we went out into the hallway. But um, Senator, I guess I'd object that that's not a question. Sure. You'll you'll have a chance to offer testimony on the road if you want, but you just made a statement about your recollection. Okay. You, you can ask questions of this witness. Okay. Seth. So, um let's see. Did I injure you in any way that day? No. Did I cause you to lose money in any way that day? No. Did you tell me about what Deputy Dukowski had been saying to you on your two other MIPs? Yeah. Yes. Did I suggest or had you know offer some um, information to you that you had willingly as a passenger in a vehicle surrendered all of your god-given rights and you did not need to do that yeah and that you have the right to stand up under common law and not be placed through tyrannical police measures yes did you tell me what officer dukowski said when he pulled you over what was the reason he pulled you over that night. He did, he did not state a reason. Was it something about a Butler Road in the, what I could recall? Uh, I believe he told us, or my the driver, uh, my friend, that he crossed the center line. I believe you had told me the white line. Yeah. The white line, which is not the center line. And there are no white lines out there on Butler when you turn off. How far did offers did Deputy Dukowski follow you that night? Your Honor, I guess I'd object to the relevance of the question. Uh, I'll overrule it. Go ahead and answer the question. Uh, from Subway to uh, Butler Road, they said that we crossed the line by uh, Subway, but I don't recall. Okay. I recall, you, and listen, I know this was a high stress environment for you. Okay. And um, I have many friends in town who have gone through this right. same thing. I guess I'm and to so, question. Well, I think she's laying the groundwork for a question. Going because you have to end up at a question. If you've gone through three years of COVID in the schools and complied with everything, you're very compliant. He did comply with me. I offered him liberty. You offered him, maybe Dukowski talked about taking his vehicle. Is that right? Yes. Are those the terms you had told me? Yes. Yeah. As a passenger, did you really have to surrender to all those things that you cooperated with them on? No. 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 And so was I offering, I know that this county doesn't like common law, but it's actually still on the books and it's a natural recourse. And there are plenty of laws that say if nobody's hurt and nobody was injured, there is no crime. So I was suggesting that you stand up for your rights for once because I don't even know where you guys got the alcohol. Can you tell me where you got the alcohol? There you go. I ask questions. Can you tell me where you got the alcohol? Um, well, well, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm not going to. Have you asked Mr. Flores any more about the underlying substance of his case? Because he would have certain privilege rights against self-incrimination. Okay. So, so I'm, not gonna, I'm not going okay. to do that. Um, you had just gotten off work, is that right? No. How long had you been off work? Um, probably a couple hours. I got off around eight. And it was what time were you picked up? Again, I guess, you know, I will go back and sustain the earlier objection. What happened during the traffic stop with Mr. Flores is not relevant to the question of whether you unlawfully gave him legal advice at the courthouse or interfered with his arraignments uh, or failed to appear for the show cause. So, so stay with so me, Your well. Honor, because mm -hmm. I believe there were some deals cut <coughs> in order to target me. Well, ask him that. Ask okay. him if he knows of any deals. Were there any deals whatever. made to keep somebody that you love from harm if you testified against me? No, I, uh, we had the court date and um, the, the 
charges were dropped to civil to civil infractions. And then after um, the court case, I was sent a letter in the mail to um, be here today to contestify. So were you charged with anything after they sent you the letter? Because I remember you called me that night um, or you messaged me that night and said they sent you a letter in the mail. That was to pull uh, you back into their jurisdiction like they did me. Only they arrested me, Seth. So yes. That was uh previous letters from the court. Um, that had shown up. But it worried you. It yeah. worried you. I know it worried you. What did I suggest that you do? Because I don't know how parents leave kids and the first thing kids should do is text their mom and dad, get over here. I got the cops pulling me over again in the middle of the night. Now you had told me that you were pulled over at 3 a.m. Is that right? I believe so, yes. So, again, I would object about the underlying case. Right, but again, the, the, the facts and circumstances of his uh, staff are not relevant. It's just I, I believe that we're protecting somebody here, Your Honor. I think it is pertinent. I, I, and I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to go down as the bad person, even though I didn't harm Seth and I didn't you cause him any question. property damage. Is that right, Seth? Do you have one? Well, yes. that, he, he, he did say that. I do. I do want to ask you, Mr. Flores, you said that it was just dropped to two civil infractions. <laughs> was that uh, conditioned in any way on your offering testimony in this matter? No. Go ahead and continue. Well, I know it can be subtle, right, Seth? Would you say that when you're in authority's presence, you are probably going through some form of high anxiety? Yes, I'm, I'm nervous when I get pulled over. Yes. And do you know that people can completely forget? I've worked with at-risk kids taking tests and everything else, and they can completely forget what has occurred and they're open to suggest suggestions. And I know how to calm kids down. And I was, was I not willing to stand with you if you were going to be pulled over? Did I not tell you if the Kowski came at you for the fourth time to get a hold of me? Yeah, I felt more confident after that, but I st I'm still nervous when cops pull me over even when I'm not in the wrong. Is it possible because of your high anxiety around, and this, you're not alone in this, dude. I can show you a dozen people in this room at least who have high anxiety around this place and anything having to do with it. And these gentlemen, is it possible that some of your memory today is not exactly right? Maybe not 100%. Did I, do you think I felt I needed to protect you and Gilbert? Because I knew what Gilbert was trying to do. He was trying to put you back in their jurisdiction. They're trying to make money off of you. And I was present, preventing that, right? Um, I felt guided almost. You felt what? I felt guided almost because I, nobody was really telling me what to do. So there were a few details that I would I would say um, I recollect differently, but I would no more put any of my friends in the jurisdiction of his authority and this court's authority and subpoenas and bonds and everything else to testify against you. That's because not I'm, well, I don't care, Your Honor. I'm here to protect Seth All right. All right. and anybody else. Can you, can you be correct? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. Flores, do you recall when you came back to the court after that arraignment day? Uh, maybe a week after. Okay, and at that point, do you recall if you um, resolved your underlying case with civil infractions? Yes, we did that day. Okay. This wasn't a use of battery, this use of codes. Hang on, Mr. You'll have to leave the court. I'm out of here, take up your time. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, Nick. Ridiculous. So you resolved your case with civil infractions, you said a week after? Yes. And then at some point, did you um, come for a, did the court issue a show of cause against you? Um, I can't recall. Okay, do you remember if there was another hearing that was held after you? Uh, Are we not just leaving here? And then I just coffee? substantiate that. Hang on, the, 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 the objection was. People forget. Hang on, the objection was leading. That is the leading question sustained. I think after the. Uh, hang on, hang on. The question. If there was an objection to the question. I sustained it, so we have to wait for another question. 
So after, did you provide testimony in your underlying case at some other time other than today? During the civil infractions when I got charged. Okay. Do you remember what the date was? I do not. I, I do not know the date. I think it was uh, December, sometime December. But you don't remember why you were testifying? Um, for, I don't know. Okay. And you said earlier that you felt guided um, while you were dealing with Ms. Bridgman. Who, who did you feel was guiding you? Uh, Ms. Bridgman, because nobody really directed me where to go. And I, it was one of my first experiences here. So I didn't really know what was going on. Do you remember if the judge ever told you where to go? Uh, after we entered the courtroom, he advised that I should talk to a lawyer. But at that point, did you already feel guided? Um, I kind of felt I didn't know who to trust. I think this has kind of been an asked to me. Okay. I don't have any more questions. Though. All right, Mr. Flores, thank you for your testimony in a second. Yeah, that that made the case right there. This is part of the bar. Click. Let's do this, Jim. Gilbert, right hand for me. You sound afraid that testimony you're about to give this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and not the truth. So, guys. Can you state your name for the record? James Gilbert. And how are you employed? Um, primarily, I am a public defender for Sheboygan for Steel County. And um, were you working in that capacity on November 30th, 2023? I was the MIDC arraignment attorney that day, plus I had my own case for Do you Are you familiar with Seth Flores? Yes, I've met him. Yeah. How are you familiar? I've met, I knew him briefly that day. Because Isn't this he, all hearsay? Because his case no, got called out. Video? Oh, because he's um, qualified. Bar Association member? So no, he's testifying from his personal oh. knowledge, so that okay. objection is overruled. Go ahead. And then I later met him on a one-on-one -on -one level after his mother brought him back into the county building a few days or a week later. Okay, so back on the um, the 30th, did, did you ever meet with Mr. Flores? Not one-on-one. -on -one. Did you ever attempt to meet with Mr. Flores? I did. Can you tell me about that attempt? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I was in the courtroom, and at some point in time, his case was called. And the and usually what happens is the people, as they come in, go up to our office on this, on this floor, and we meet with them there before their arraignment to tell what's going to happen. I had not met with Mr. Florence. He, he was in the courtroom. Uh, Judge Visna called his case and asked if he had met with the arraignment attorney. He said no, and Judge Visna told him that he should meet with me. But then what happened was um, there was another gentleman in the room that made some comment about uh, I wasn't going to represent him and just to tell the court that I wasn't going to meet with them. I said, I can't do that. I need to follow up, finish up with a couple of cases and I'd be up for how to meet with them. And a little bit later, I attempted to do that. Wow. Can you tell me um, about the attempt in the hallway? Yes. I walked out into the hallway and um, Mr. Florence was there with the, the lady that's here in the courtroom. And, the uh, woman, the woman, uh, the living soul. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, on three attempts, I tried to talk to Mr. Florence, and each time I was interrupted, uh, oh. wasn't allowed to talk to him. And who interrupted you? Um, the, wow. woman, the, the woman in, in the courtroom in the green jacket, her coat. Okay, isn't this some kind of bar association star chamber thing we got going on here? Wow. Oh, this is me. Ms. Bridgman, it's testimony under oath, and you'll have a chance for cross -examination. Okay, I just validated your oath. What does testimony under oath mean in this county? Ms. Bridgman, I mean, I've warned you repeatedly. I don't know if you're having some enjoyment out of that, but I really want you to participate in the courtroom fully from this. If you continue to I disrupt know. it, I'll have you watch it from a jail cell over video, and I'll mute you, and you can just listen. But I don't want to do that. I want you to participate fully. Will you please cooperate with me in that and let the process go forward? I mean, we got to have a hearing. So I see what I a see. Star chamber is something here. that determines guilt without okay. a hearing. So I'd like to see Gilbert's oath of office. 
And you were, I got yours. So you said you were interrupted three times. Is that what you said? That's correct. Okay, at some point, um, or what did you do after that? Uh, after, after that, I, I just uh, I went back up to the our office, and I at that time our <clears throat> there was like the the person that's in charge of the present gentleman, and Mr. Keogh. I just reported what had happened, uh, and pretty much uh, that was it. I learned later that Mr. Florence had left the building. Okay, and then did you? Um, so at any point, did you assist Mr. Flores with an arraignment on that date? I did not. And at any point, were you able to go over the uh, facts of his case and advise him of his rights? I was not. I attempted on three times, and I don't remember the exact order. I at one point tried to explain in the hallway what my job was. Um, the lady, uh, Ms. Bridgman, interrupted me at one point in time and said, said you know, his job is to scare the hell out of you. That was one time she interrupted. I tried again. I was told, and I was told that Mr. Florence was not going to contract with me. And I thought the two of them were together. And then there was a third time I was interrupted and I basically said, okay, I'm done. And then um, at some point later, you met with Mr. Flores? That was a couple of days later, a couple of days or possibly a week. And I don't know exactly. Do you recall if um, there was any other any other hearings in his, in his case? I, uh, I was subpoenaed as I was today for a, I believe a show cause hearing for Mr. Florence. That I had to testify at, and I believe that was in December. Do you remember what the underlying um, show cause was? Uh, for his failure to stay for the arraignment. And that would have been the arraignment on the 30th? Correct. I don't have any questions, Mr. Hilbert. Ms. Richmond, any cross exam questions for Mr. Hilbert? Yes. So you take a kid who's anxious gave away all of his inalienable rights when if they asked, if he gave his driver's license, Dukowski just violated the law. He was a passenger in the vehicle. And he didn't give accurate testimony, but I'm not gonna make him perjure himself. And everything you just said does not line up with people that I have here that were there. Do you, Do you want me to call witnesses, Your Honor? Okay, you haven't asked the witness a question. Okay. So I'm going to assume you don't want to ask the witness a question. Was, okay. was Seth One really question. in the courtroom and arraigned and approached by you in the courtroom? He was never arraigned. He was in the courtroom. And the judge advised that he needed to kind of speak with me. And I said I had a few more matters. I'd be out in, the, out in the hallway. And that's where you and him were waiting out in the hallway. So that's when I tried to approach Mr. Flores. Did Seth and I, were we aware that the judge, because was it perhaps that when Seth turned in the paperwork to the clerk of court, that she let the judge know and the judge let you know, go out there and get him and she's talking to him and you better go get him arraigned. You better go talk to him because I already had him out there and done before you were ever on the scene. You took all of his inalienable rights violated due process for the kid and then you're trying to make him your it put him in your jurisdiction and i was saving him from that because do you have a question for mr gilbert yes ask he are you prepared to perjure yourself okay it's nice that oh we have i'm glad i that's not a proper question i'm going to determine that miss bridgman is has elected that she doesn't want to ask okay mr. let me ask question. him she just wants to rail against him mr gilbert you can set that yeah, how do you ask questions of when you all cook this all up between yourselves? Ms. Miller, your next witness. Your Honor, I don't have any further witnesses this matter. Okay. And um, the court will take judicial notice of its own files and the transcript of the arraignment on November 30th, the transcript of the order to show cause on December 21st, and the uh, on the failure to appear, the court will take judicial notice of uh, Miss Bridgman's uh, uh, returning the order to show up, the order to appear, uh, cut into strips with the writing of offer to contract is not accepted, as well as the statements that she made at uh, her arraignment on the bench floor. All right, so Miss Bridgman, so this is do you, you have can... any? Do you have any witnesses that you wish to present? 
I have to say that even being here today and, and putting myself and submitting myself to your authority that has not been substantiated goes against the one and living God that I respond to. You cannot. Ask okay, me so I've that. given uh, given you an opportunity. Nobody want to go see on what happened that day. But I don't want anybody to enter your jurisdiction, Your okay, Honor, so, because so you're not okay, calling my me. honor. Let's do it this way. Hang on, hang on. So you're you. So I've offered you an opportunity to call witnesses, and you've elected not. Closing arguments, Ms. Miller. Your Honor, I'd ask that the court find um, Ms. Bridgman in contempt for um, the unauthorized for interfering with Mr. Flores' arrest and arraignment from the MIDC and engaging in unauthorized practice of law. Um, there was testimony that uh, Mr. Flores didn't know Ms. Bridgman before he entered the courtroom on the, or the courthouse on the 30th, um, that she approached him, um, that she was with him um, when she was with him in the courtroom. Um, she told him that he didn't need a lawyer. Um, she was providing legal advice to him saying that um, she didn't need, he didn't need to, um, he was driving his personal vehicle and he didn't need to engage with the process. He testified that she told him what to write on the ticket to provide to the court. I asked the court to take judicial notice of the ticket um, with Mr. Flores' writing on it. Um, he testified that once he turned it in, he was advised to leave the building by Ms. Bridgman before he um, had his arraignment. Well, um, so I would. And then further, the testimony of Mr. Gilbert, that he was the arraignment attorney, that he was in the courtroom when the judge indicated that Mr. Flores should meet with him. Um, he testified that Ms. Uh, Bridgman interrupted him three times um, from, from a meeting with Mr. Flores that he tried to but wasn't able to. He wasn't able to advise him of his rights or to go over the ticket with him. And further, that um, Mr. Flores left without being arraigned on the matter. Is it still possible to object to all these presumptive <laughs> evidences? You brought your own people in. She, well, <laughs> who are argument. on the county payroll. It's closing argument. Go ahead. You and I would have ask, your chance. And I would ask the court. Um, I, I think it's clear that Ms. Ms. Bridgman was uh, interfering with Mr. Flores's or meeting with the arraignment attorney by physically um, preventing Mr. Gilbert from meeting with him, um, further telling him what to put on a piece of, of a document to submit to the court on his behalf. Um, would also uh, that would also be engaging in um, giving him legal advice. Um, so I find the court. I'd ask the court to find her contempt on that. And I'd also ask the court to find her contempt so, for failing to appear on um, the show cause that was issued to her um, on the 20th of December. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ms. Bridgman, now is your opportunity to make any closing argument that you wish. Go ahead. I am not in this hearing situation. This has been conducted as what is called a star chamber. Um, as all of our founding fathers left because the Bar Association members are arraigned against a witness and they have no due process. Has anybody here not witnessed a breach of public trust and due process? Yes. 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 Well, people can judge for themselves. We've conducted a hearing to testify. It's not a hearing, it's a witch hunt. Hang on, hang on. No. There was no closing our CCP. All right. Any further outbursts, you'll have to leave or you'll be taken into custody. So practicing law, none of you have an actual license to practice law. Did you know that, right? A bar association membership is not a license. You're not registered on LARA, the state's licensing administration. You're not registered. Your primary oath is to the bar association. We know about your secret commitments to one another and not to follow the unalienable rights of the people and due process. This is not, you have just set up a star chamber and you've got guys with guns ready to carry out whatever you want and you have not even taken enough care about the people and your, your situation in the court to execute a proper oath. You should have had somebody swear that oath to you. You can't sign your own oath and have it notarized. You did that with uh, the prosecutor. You have to have somebody who swore you in signing it and then a notary. It takes three people. I should not be submitted. If somebody is practicing 
law without a license, it's all of you bar association members. Yep. No, there is no license. It's a private membership. And I cannot subject myself as a living soul to an authority that violates my God-given unalienable rights. And if you gentlemen carry that out, have you any idea what you're doing, what you're being asked to do? You need to think about it because I can tell you right now, our military is watching every move you make right now. This is your opportunity to stand for the people and not for the people that are trying to steal every one of our rights as they did with Seth Flores. You should be ashamed of yourself, Deputy Dukowski. You told him on his second MIP, you were going to take his vehicle and he was going to have to pay $12,000 to get out of the impound. Do you know how many friends I have that can't drive a freaking car in this county up until the age of 35? I don't practice law. I practice rights. I practice people living free and supporting one another. So if your court finds me guilty, your court is finding every God-given right the universe has ever known to be a fraud. We would be happy to administer the real oath for you today, Judge Gothier. We have a body of people. We would be happy to do that. We need a district court judge for the people to reinstate common law. The Bar Association has bought out the entire state of Michigan for the CCP. I know what that means. I know what your role in that means. And I believe redemption is for everyone. Yeah. And I could be your best friend to make, I believe you know God's truth. I believe you want to do God's truth. And I believe you could be the man that we need, but we have to leave this process of the Bar Association and you have to take an accurate oath. All witnesses. All witnesses, too. Right there. All right, thank you, Ms. Bridger. <clears throat> now I'll make the ruling. Article 6 of Michigan's Constitution of 1963 vests the judicial power of the state of the state of Michigan in the Supreme Court and courts of record as established by law. It also gives the Supreme Court superintending control over all the lower courts. Michigan's constitution also provides for the passage of public acts passed by the legislature and approved by the governor. These statutes, uh, despite bad information that people get online, <laughs> have the force of law. Michigan has a statutory system regulating the practice of law. Michigan Compiled Law 600.901 through 949. Section 904 vests the Supreme Court with the power over the state. Ms. Bridgman, you may not leave the courtroom. I'm going to talk to somebody. I'm not trying to get away, Dukowski. You won't see okay. me at 3 a.m. on Butler Road. I'm giving my ruling here. Okay. Section 904 vests the Supreme Court with power over the State Bar of Michigan, which under Section 901 is a public body corporate consisting of all persons licensed to practice law in Michigan. Section 916 makes it illegal. For anyone to practice law unless they're licensed to do so. You're not the licensed. Michigan Supreme are. Court in State Bar v. Kramer, 399 Mich 116 in 1976, noted that this statutory scheme merely recognizes the inherent authority of the courts at common law to control the practice of law, dating back to the common law of England. When, when so called sovereign citizens complain about the common law, they neglect to notice that the common law was what courts said. Codes this and legislation is are not the importance of protecting the public from the danger of unskilled persons practicing law. <clears throat> oh my goodness. What constitutes the practice of law? In Dressel v. Maribank, the Michigan Supreme Court in 2003 held that a person engages in the practice of law when he counsels or assists another in matters that require the use of legal discretion and profound legal <laughs> So, Your Honor, where well, was that free in my latest charges? Protect the right of people to espouse beliefs and to tell other people about those beliefs. Ryan. So, Ms. Bridgman has the free speech right to believe what she wants to about courts and government and to tell other people about that. This includes, of course, criticism of government and of the courts. 
but to give advice, guidance, and assistance to another person in their own legal matter at the courthouse to be applied to their particular case at that time crosses the line into the practice of law. At its heart, the practice of law is applying legal knowledge to a particular issue or problem. This unauthorized practice of law is a contempt of court. You had that written up earlier, didn't you? Additionally, interfering with someone meeting with their attorney is a disruption of the court process and is therefore also a contempt of court. He was not there the to primary meet his purpose of yet. contempt power is to preserve the effectiveness and sustain the power of the court. The power to hold a party in contempt is an inherent judiciary. Yet still, the legislature has recognized this and codified it. This is merely a recognition of the common law contempt power of courts. Among these statutes, Section 600, Section 1701H provides that any court of record may hold in contempt all persons for assuming to be and acting as officers, attorneys, or counselors of any court without authority, or for other unlawful interference with or resistance to the process of proceedings in, in any action. So interfering with a person's consultation with an appointed attorney is directed by a judge, interferes with that process in that court case, and is a contempt of court. There are two forms of contempt, civil and criminal. Civil contempt applies when someone refuses to obey a court order and the court coerces their compliance. So in civil contempt, the person can contempt by obeying the order. Criminal contempt you applies to put hands action. on me today. For failure to appear as a criminal contempt. The uh, court, Ms. Bridgman. You've had your I've given Aaron, you every opportunity. You are misbehaving. You've had this prepared. You opened up with your witnesses. Come on now. Court of Appeals has specifically I was not practicing law. I was practicing rights. Common law in the Constitution is about rights, not law. So the court finds, not your legal finds Ms. Richmond in contempt of court oh, for yes. the unauthorized practice of law in giving Mr. Flores advice particular to his situation on what to write on his ticket as a lawful defense to disobey the court's direction to consult with the MIDC attorney, which is required by law. And to leave the court, court house, and he was not authorized to do so. And that resulted in harm to Mr. Flores. There was a he he was in jeopardy of contempt of court by leaving uh, without finishing the arraignment process by My following honor, the bad advice of Ms. Bridger. I am not that wanting to be in contempt of court by practicing court. law. It's a contempt of court for the for interfering with the court process. Ms. Bridgman is also in contempt of court for failing to appear. For the show cause hearing when she didn't show up for it but she instead beforehand turned in the order cut up into little pieces with the statement your offer to contract is not accepted you trespassed on my yard with Courts no the inherent authority right. to compel attendance and she is in contempt of court for, for doing that so, so miss bridgman is in contempt of court uh, for unauthorized practice of law and oh. for the interfering with the court process on November 30th, 2023. She's also in contempt of court for failing to appear oh, the for her show cause hearing. Um, be careful. I know some jujitsu. Um, uh, oh, on December 20th. On, uh, I'm sorry. So, my honor. So she's in contempt of court for failing to appear on December 20th. All right, Ms. Miller, uh, any allocution as to sentence? Your honor, I just, um, it's concerning whenever a person is not able to um, participate in the judicial process in accordance with their rights. Um, so I think that's the, the, the biggest issue. And so Mr. Flores um, wasn't able to meet with MIDC, left without being arraigned. Um, so I just asked the court to, to keep that That's right. in its uh, consideration when it happens. All right, Ms. Bridgman, do you have anything you wish to say before the court pronounces sentence for the consent? Under common law, which is the only true law because it's based, it comes from God's natural law. And the Constitution is based on that. The Constitution is not about law, it's about rights. I was not talking to Mr. Flores about any legal thing because I'm not a bar association lawyer. 
I don't know about all your laws. I do know that the need to have a uh, attorney at arraignment from what state trooper Brenda Casperson told me only started a year ago. That is codes and statutes. We are not bound by that. We are living beings. We are not the corporate debt entity of the court system. I did not practice law. I practiced his rights. Do you know there are plenty of other counties in this state that accept that same documentation that I filed and had Seth fly, filed? I was hoping to make him unafraid of all of these. He has good things to say about a couple of your deputies. They're not all like that. This court is for profit. So standing in the way of that attorney, but that testimony, Mr. Gilbert, you should be ashamed of yourself, was not truthful. You had never approached. Right, Ms. Bridgman, this is your opportunity to tell me what, what penalty I should give you. If any. Was anybody if harmed? Was there any other uh, financial damage to Seth Flores? I know there was to Mr. Gilbert because he lost a client that day, but then he recovered that. Good. Okay. Are we not allowed to talk to people in the the uh, courthouse, not in the courtroom? Is that not a public space? Are we not allowed to help a fellow citizen understand that he doesn't have to lose everything in his life because he's just getting started, that he can have people stand with him and encourage him and coach him through, maybe handle his drinking. I suggested that he stop drinking and he start to uh, you know, pay attention and we'll be there if he gets pulled over because he's afraid. <clears throat> I don't see where there has been any harm. And if you can rule that is contempt, I have no longer any, I see no ability to redeem anything in this courtroom. You refuse to address your oath. And if you hold me in contempt of court, I think that's quite unbelievable. Absolutely. All right, well, I've already yeah, so had- I, I do have somebody who would like to make a statement on my behalf. No, that's not allowed. All right, so- um, uh, I have See, filed you're a, a judge, I, jury. Yeah, you, 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 you've made all your statements. Uh, I have filed a, an oath proper under the laws. Of, I filed the constitutional oath required by Article 1, Section 11 of the state constitution. All these sovereign citizen folks who get these crazy arguments online that are frankly just wrong. I encourage you, read the state constitution. You'll, you'll find that all this stuff you're getting from seminars or whatever online is just false. And Mr. Flores, to his harm, listened to it and almost got held in contempt. Ms. Bridgman has total disregard for the court's he authority. He courts, was not and courts are the way that citizens have recourse to the law. In societies that don't have a court system, they don't have the rule of law. You end up with the rule of, okay. of the bully. And the, the court protects citizens from the government several times. There's important business to be had. There was important business to be had for Mr. Flores that day. I don't think and that Ms. Kristen interfered oh, wow. and she totally refused to appear for Sorry. court willfully. Her conduct today has been directly contumacious and she has uh, exhibited repeated disregard and frankly, utter contempt for not only this court, but for really any court. Uh, and so- Under the Bar Association? Law, I believe so. You're not uh, so, upholding anything to the Constitution and the know, state I, Constitution. I can. do need to give a, a sentence that uh, is proportionate, uh, but also is, is enough to discourage Ms. Bridgman from this type of oh. interference and also to discourage other people from following down a similar path. So, Ms. Bridgman, you're ordered order to 30 days yeah. jail, sir. Right, Sean. That thing can come with me, okay? You know, guys, Her you need court. to arrest the judge for pers impersonating you a public official. Right. You need to arrest the judge for impersonating a public official. Mr. Um, okay. Are you concerned at all about what you're being asked to do? Yeah. Judge, when does it have to be started? She can serve Mr. Days Flores, Mr. Flores said no harm was done to him. He didn't say a date on when it should start. Can we talk about that? We'll start right at this moment. We'll let it go home and come back. 
Okay. I need you to listen to the citizens of this community and understand no, how are we ever going to give back a constitutional share of it? You're not following anything about our inalienable rights. No, the military has a way to deal with it. I know. Oh, thanks for coming in, Lieutenant Tebo. I mean, I only go in the jail with four deputies. I mean, anything less would be. And you, want get, you, want get, you, want you want somebody to take the cell phone and bring back the No, this is correction. My daughter. Right. Let's go. Let's go. All right, guys. We're just going to let this stand. A man with a fraudulent oath of office. I can't wait to look into yours, Paige. Keep going. Come on, please. Thank you. Thank you. You guys need to pick the right side. Let's go. Yes, yeah, you can pick the side. Come on. Let's go. Yeah, we are. You are. Stop it. That tells me. I know what I'm going to do. Let's go. It could be. It could be. That's fine. Some very right personal. Your deputies have no right. Correction. As a passenger for their driver's license. Okay. That is illegal. He's here. He's just lining up with people. Are you going to tell your deputies that? Are you are you no, going to answer this? I will tell them whatever you want me to tell them. They have no right to ask for passengers drivers. Okay, I'll tell you that. It should be enforced. Yes, sir. Wonder if everybody's gone. Yes. <clears throat> I want you to know I'm Bill Klein. Okay. Okay. And I'm the lead man for the Sanctuary Counties. Okay. In I made several speeches on behalf of you guys. Why are only here in this county? Well, there you have it. That was spectacular. I've been holding that up the whole time. I've been biting my tongue. As you can see, I made an executive decision to stay out of the way of it. It it was. It was, uh, I, I knew from the last, um, if you want to see the first appearance when she gets held in contempt, I put a link to that in the description below. So I knew that this was gonna, going to be deliciously awful, and it was. <laughs> I knew it. I made an executive decision to just stay out of the way of it. I mean, where to begin? She's wrong on everything. She doesn't understand the law. She doesn't understand procedure. She's obnoxious. She She's you know she's in contempt of court she's trying to uh practice law without a license the the it was interesting i didn't expect all this i thought it would just be a contempt proceeding on her acting like a jerk i, I didn't know that we were going to bring in a witness and say that he that she tried to act like an attorney that is rarely prosecuted because it's it it's so hard to prove up but but they did here they absolutely did uh, th this kid who testified, you know, she was she was trying to act like she knew something and advise him, and that's unauthorized practice of law. And on top of all that, he was like a nervous witness. He wasn't like, you know, he wasn't like gung ho about it. He was. You could tell that he 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 was uncomfortable being there, and what he was saying was just what he really thought, and it, it was absolutely devastating. You know, so she 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 doesn't understand the procedure. Obviously, she doesn't understand the concept of hearsay. She doesn't understand objections. She doesn't understand anything. Uh, but it was it was fun. She she's out there. Judge ultimately gives her thirty days. I th I think that's that's a good call. J Judge Gothier, I've I've thought this a long time. He's he's just absolutely excellent. He was excellent today. Um, 
the defense attorney who testified was also excellent. I love it. It's like both of these guys. She's up there just squawking her nonsense. And, and like both of them are like, whatever. Just treating her like the three-year-old having a temper tantrum that she was. You know, just just let her do it. The, the ultimate, I mean, through all of us, all of it was good. And she kept having outbursts. But the, the ultimate for me was was near the end. When, when the judge said, uh, you, you show a complete lack of respect for this court. And then she decides to try to shut him down right after he says that. <laughs> Which, you know, what can you say? What can you say? And then she, she finds, you know, she scrapes together three like-minded knuckleheads to, to, to come to the court <laughs> and, and say dumb things. It was, it was like a Simpsons episode or something. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. It was so good. So thank you all so much. I, I can go through super chats now. I, I just didn't I didn't want to mess up the integrity of that of that situation. It was too good. All right, let's let's go through these there. Thank you. Oh, we've got gifted memberships here. I've got I've got a <laughs> I've I apparently I have a number a member named One Badass Momo. That that's just, that's cool in and of itself. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mary. Yeah, 200, 200 was a big one. Let me see what else we got here. <laughs> yeah, the opening statement. The opening statement was uh, was top notch, along with her, along with all of her examinations. Ah, uh, th that was another interesting part. At one point, the pr the, the prosecutor objected to relevance, and I th I think she was right. Judge overruled her, and I know why. He's trying to give her a ton of latitude because he knows the conspiratorial mindset. So he's he's letting stuff in that he wouldn't let me do or another attorney. And that's fine. And th but then about five minutes later, he's like, "Yeah, I I'm going to revisit that relevance objection, and I'm now sustaining it." <laughs> ah, that made me chuckle. I get it. I get where it was coming from the whole time. Uh yeah, yeah. I mean, she she's up there squawking the whole time, and then just, so what else can you say? Are you done? Uh, like, are you... so fun. So this is the second one that we've had in front of Gothry that claims to be a woman in common law. I have a whole playlist on the other one. I think I'm just going to throw her on there too. I didn't. I didn't think that playlist would expand to a, to yet another litigant, but here we are. Oh, it was it was some lawful law going down <laughs> in Northern Michigan. Oh, all all the all the bailiffs too are the same. We're like, yeah, we're not doing this. Just. They're, they're they're squawking with, with all their nonsense that you know, and they're just like, I'll tell you what, why don't you leave the courtroom now? <laughs> I loved it. <sighs> Seriously, she she earned a worse sentence than that, but thirty days should do it. That that should calm her down a little bit. If it doesn't, then you do it again. You you just you just keep doing it. That is literally. That video should be viewed by law students, yeah, both in terms of the unauthorized practice of law, the justification of, of law, the the uh, underlying foundations, all of that. And she she keeps going at the judge. Oh, oh, you had this put together. Yeah, judges have things put together all the time because they they suspect that that they're going a certain way with their ruling. The, he saw you. He saw you in contempt. The the last time. Now, if you went up there and gave some sparkling presentation and, and changed and acted normal for five seconds, he, he could change his mind and not go with it. But of course, they, they have a, a, an outline of what, of what their ruling is going to be if they plan on ruling the same day. Oh. <laughs> I was entertained. <laughs> I was thoroughly entertained.
<laughs> I was. I, I really was. Oh, thank you. Oh, Dilly Dave, you're correct. We need we needed P Barnes to kick it, kick down the uh, door the door of the courthouse and just take care of business. Everyone would everyone would have applauded, except her and her three knuckleheads. <laughs> By the way, I'm not going to name the name, but I I got tipped off. I knew about the hearing because I did this. I think I was in Vegas. And someone told me about this hearing, and it was spectacular. And then once I figured out it was the same person, I was all about it. But I, I had, I had a local. I had a local. Oh wait, and she knows who she is. I've already said thank you. But the, the, the here's this nugget. This is this is. I also saw something. I think this is Facebook or IG or something. From the from the defendant Beth Bridgman, apparently, she she writes, "The force will be uh, will be with us. God's light will shine down to shatter the darkness. See you Thursday at one thirty for a two o'clock contempt of court hearing. Freedom over tyrant." So she was she was uh, working to pack the court with uh, with knuckleheads. She got a couple. <laughs> she got a couple. Ah, oh, where are we at here? Thank you, Scott. Yeah, yeah, she 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 knew it was legitimate. She's gonna she she's got another thirty days. I really like that too. Well, can we talk about when this starts? Um, no, no, you can't you can't step around and uh, in contempt like that, and and then ask the judge to to come in the you know the week after next or something. No, that's not how it works. You're going today. Thank you. Yeah, they don't. They don't function in society. Oh, that's them being cute, mispronouncing a word on purpose. Uh, yeah, it's it's a common soft set thing to play. This they do the same thing with uh, with, with other stuff like township. You know, saying that has something to do with a boat. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's just stupid. There's 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 no there's no deeper explanation than this stuff is stupid. That's as far as you can get with some of it. <laughs> yep, that's 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 what they're going with. They like to. They think uh, sticking the term "lean" in there makes them deep somehow. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It just makes me want to do this every time I hear it. Thank you. Yep. Oh, I I would have been. I mean, well, she was held in contempt as well because she she was extreme. But uh, the, oh, I would. The, the there we wouldn't have had a hearing. They would have just been bailiff. Go go put cuffs on him. But take him out now. They the, the, I would have get, not gotten near that leeway because they know I know better. <laughs> uh <laughs> might have called for it really oh i don't know karen blandini i imagine it's another soft set you mean kim blandina who claims to not be a soft set I don't know. <laughs> uh, she was inducing a lot of IBS, lots of IBS as, as we as we proceeded through that that debacle. <laughs> 
I'm not familiar with the Ty Tucker trial. I I might if I if I if I learn about it. Thank you, Mo Banshee. Thank you, Katie. Insane and inane. That that might be a future thumbnail. I like it. I like it. It's very descriptive and and it's uh, apropos to the soft sit movement. <laughs> oh, th th this is a nugget. It, it, for anybody who hasn't seen it, go back and watch the first video. She was no better. She was no better. And the, the judge could see it coming all day. I, I don't know if she spent time in jail in between. I don't know. She's spending time in jail now. <laughs> yeah, that's all we need. That's all we need. All right. All right. I, d I did have a backup. I I've got a couple other good ones. I'm not going to do it now. I'm, I'm not going to do it now. Or should I? Now nah, I'll just leave this as it is. This should be a standalone, just, just, just one woman in common law saying her piece, you know, <laughs> full goat salute to crazy soft sit Karen. I, I forgot her name. I just read it. I, I can't, I forgot her name. It doesn't matter. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So I think that's contempt, but I think she still has an underlying charge. So if, if we're lucky, we might get some more court appearances. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> the beatings will continue until the attitude is adjusted. <laughs> let's hope for more. Let's hope, let's hope she hasn't had enough in 30 days and she comes back and, and starts spewing the same nonsense. That, 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 that would be fun. That would be fun. All right. Thank you all for coming out. I really appreciate it. It, it was it wasn't my usual routine, but like I said, I knew I knew that th this was going to be absolutely rich. It was. So uh, I I I I, did, I went to uh, I went to protocol B to uh, to handle this particular hearing. Thanks for coming out. I'll see you all soon.